Lyre Experimental Centre is renowned by many visitors for its beautiful natural surroundings and for its reconstructed prehistoric houses. But how many of the visitors know that it was to carry out experiments with these very houses that the experimental centre was created? Lyre Experimental Centre was founded in 1964 and in the summer of 1965 work began on the construction of no less than a whole village of reconstructed Iron Age houses. Most of the houses were copies of house remains from Jutland from the period from 100 BC to 100 AD. The building work at Lyre was organised as summer camps with young people taking part from Denmark and the rest of the world. The driving force behind all this was a young ethnology student, Hans Ola Hansen, from Ellisdew, near Lyre. Prior to setting up the Iron Age village, he had spent several years developing various ideas that he had tested elsewhere. The intention was to reconstruct an Iron Age house based on archaeological excavations. Later, the house was to be burnt down and the resulting ruin then excavated. The burnt ruin would then be compared with the original excavations of comparable burnt house sites from the Iron Age. On the morning of the 9th of August 1967, everything is ready for the experimental fire. Faithful fitting out of the Iron Age house reinforces the experiment's authenticity. The fittings include a shelf for drying grain and a wooden bed. Various types of clay vessels stand on the floor and on the shelves. Joints of meat, a fishing net and loom weights are hung up. An axe has been embedded in a post. A calf, dead of natural causes, must take the place of the Iron Age house's domesticated animals. Wooden structures such as, for example, the layer of poles in the roof and the load-bearing elements are recorded using nailed-on tin labels. The equipment for recording temperatures stands ready. The house is set alight. The flames spread from a large fire on the hearth to a hanging drying shelf and from here onto the roof. Only a few minutes after the great fire is lit, the house itself ignites. Ignition creates an inferno that would have killed any living thing inside the house instantly. Luckily, the experimenters have already made their exit on the orders of the professional firemen from Copenhagen Fire Brigade who are attending the experiment. Now the fire develops rapidly. Synchronized clocks make for easier documentation by film and photograph. During the fire, Hans Ola Hansen records a running commentary on a tape recorder. The ridge of the house sinks slowly down. Now the east gable is collapsing. Fierce waves of heat rush out here. The hole in the east gable is closed. The rafters stick up almost like the ribs of a whale. They tip up higher and higher and are not yet burnt through. It is very interesting. The ridge seems to be forcing the layer of rafters downwards. After 15 minutes, the whole roof has collapsed. The posts stand as burning columns until their collapse, while the daub-covered walls are much more sedate in their demise. After only 20 minutes, the whole of the house's roof-bearing construction has collapsed, and after an hour, the violent flames have been reduced to a smouldering in areas with great amounts of turf. Some of the large clay vessels remain standing. Two weeks after the fire in 1967, an investigation was carried out of a small number of metre squares. Various items were relocated, including traces of a threshing floor with its charred tools and burnt grain spread out in black patches, almost like some kind of negative on the red fired floor. Traces of rafters and other roof timbers could also be identified as grey and black stripes on the clay floor. The main point of the experiment was thereby confirmed. Traces of special activities, contents and the house's construction can be observed in archaeological burnt house sites as long as you understand how to decipher and interpret them. After this first small excavation in 1967, the house site was covered with earth. 25 years were to elapse before a proper excavation took place. In 1992 and 93, the southern part of the longhouse was excavated by archaeology students from the University of Copenhagen. The excavation was carried out as a proper archaeological excavation, and in its first season it was therefore executed as a blind test. 
The aim was to evaluate the actual excavation methods. The archaeologists did not, for example, know the precise location of the house. Neither did they know how it had been fitted out or how the fire had proceeded. The results of the excavation were compared with the evidence from prehistoric burnt house sites. From the sequence of events during the fire, it was known, for example, that the roof had collapsed before the walls fell in. This picture could be recognized in the layers of soil and charred wood, which were found during the excavation. The pattern could also be relocated in real burnt house sites from the Iron Age. But it was also possible to question some of the results achieved through previous excavations of prehistoric houses. For example, on finding large collections of pot sheds, it has often been thought that these come from pots that had stood high up, for example on a shelf, and that they had shattered on falling. In the burnt house from Lyre, it was apparent that the pottery vessels placed on a shelf had not broken. They were found in the same intact state as the vessels that had stood on the floor. Many parts of the house's construction could be relocated during the excavation. For example, elements of the collapsed roof, as well as parts of the south wall and gables. Not all the recorded information proved, however, to be correct. For example, a door was recorded between the buyer and the living quarters, which had never actually been there. But there was a hayloft for hay and straw here. The idea of the door came from a previous excavation of an Iron Age house site, and this hypothesis must now perhaps be revised. The blinds test also gave food for thought, because there actually were artifacts that could not be relocated. Afterwards, we will look at the excavation plans and the plans which Hans Ola Hansen had produced immediately after the fire and compare them, partly to see whether our excavation techniques and methods were good enough. Is our house the house that was built here, or have we misinterpreted something? This is a check which is never available for an archaeological burnt house, the fact that it is possible to go back and see if you have interpreted the site correctly. One of the great surprises was the poor state of preservation of the house. It became apparent that all the wood not charred by the fire, that is the lowermost parts of the earth-set post of the house construction, were severely decayed. It was therefore at the last moment that the house was investigated if the posts were to be relocated in the form of wood. In this respect, the house remains, after only 25 years, already resemble a real archaeological 2,000-year-old ruin. Not even the various layers in the earth arising from the floor and the collapsed walls were more clearly defined than they would have been in a house ruin from prehistory. The fire experiment at Lyre has made it easier to interpret new archaeological finds of burnt house sites. Looking back, the fire experiment was a beautifully thought through and very visionary exercise. It has contributed to establishing Lyre Experimental Center's name internationally as a scientific field station for the execution of experimental archaeology. Since then, numerous experiments have been carried out at the Experimental Center involving living in Iron Age houses. Some of these experiments were carried out over longer periods during the winter, including those by archaeology students from the University of Copenhagen. Animals in the buyer contribute to a realistic impression of winter living conditions. We can never be completely sure how people in prehistory used these Iron Age houses and how they lived in them. But we can gain an impression of how the houses function by using them and occupying them. In this way, ideas for new theories concerning life in the Iron Age are born.